Hello and welcome to Off Their Shelf Reviews. I saw this fucking movie coming. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Jigsaw, which released in 2017. From writers Josh Stolberg and Pete Goldfinger and directed by Michael and Peter Spirig. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, it has been 10 years since Jigsaw has perished and we are now seeing five new players enter into a game. We also follow Detectives Halloran and Detective Hunt who are investigating not only these new victims that are appearing but what quite possibly could be the resurrection of Jigsaw. Oh shit. No, it's not creepy at all. Well, after Saw the final chapter kind of <laughs> ended things off... Yeah, ended? It took seven years to to get the next Saw movie made, and yeah. this is the first one to not have a Roman numeral explaining yeah. that this is the eighth movie yeah. in the series. Yeah. Uh, and this time around, like, brand new directors, brand new writers. Yeah. But... Kevin grutard has gone back to uh, back to editing still. Oh right, okay. Charlie Clauser still doing the music. Oh right. The okay. same producers, the same crew, all the same filmmakers, but they just decided this time around we need some fresh ideas and some fresh talent to kind of reinvent or reintroduce this new generation into the Saw franchise. Yeah. And so this one kind of almost serves like as a soft reboot. Yeah. It's it not is. a remake. Yeah. It tries to, you know, fit itself in chronologically somewhere. Mm. Uh, and it's one of those films that's going to keep you guessing because we all know that John Kramer, Jigsaw, died at the end of three, somewhere during the fourth movie. Yeah. <laughs> and has been dead this whole time. Yet somehow the Jigsaw killings start up again and we've got the police investigating <laughs> these new spat of killings before they realise all the evidence points to John Kramer being alive. Shock. I'm like, oh, oh. I mean, you know, we've gone to the eighth movie in the series, Ian. It's time. It like the films no, have go. already gone so <laughs> over the top. Let it go. Like just. Just bring just, him back. Like, no. just have have his twin brother that died, you know? Like, that's more believable than some Jim of the stuff Kramer. that goes... Yeah, you want it's Jim more Kramer. believable than some of the stuff that's gone on in some of these it movies. Is. It is. I mean... I mean and I, at this point, I'd buy it. I, I would take him... I would take his twin brother coming back from space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. Like, the uh, the first trap that we see, the, 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 the new five... That are in the that they, that, that set was called the space set oh, because right. they wanted to go right. We're, we're, get, we're leaving the dungeons, the basements, the the rundown bathrooms, and we're going to an entirely new location, which looks clean and uh, it it's so detached. It doesn't have that horrible it's green so dingy filter. It's over the top. It looks modern. It's over the top. Well, every movie's been over the top no, since the no, first no, one. No, 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 no. Yes. No, no, no. This this, <laughs> what? this this trap set up lost. Lost me immediately. I mean, Gary and I went and saw this in the cinema when it first came out. We were excited. You know, new Saw movie. I'd been following the series for a while. You know, hopefully that they're revitalizing it. They're putting, breathing new life into it. But I had my reservations. I am not a fucking idiot. I've watched enough horror series movies for myself personally to know that somebody somewhere is going to fuck it up. Somebody somewhere is just going to go, oh, there's a new generation of kids that need to see this horror franchise. So let's bring it back. Let's let's revitalize it. Let's redo the story. Let's like like you said, let's get a whole new bunch of new blood into the driving seat of this movie and we'll get all the old people with the experience and they can bring in the experience into the movie and they can mix it together and it'll be perfect. We'll be capturing lightning in a bottle for the second time and it's like no. No, you won't. So when we sat down to watch the film, the film started off... Well, the film doesn't start off with the people in the trap like a lot of the other Saw movies. It starts off with a police car chase. In daylight. In daylight. And you're like, what the fuck's going on? And they're chasing this guy. And so if you're if you're experienced, you know that this guy's kind of involved in the game somewhere because obviously he, he doesn't want to stop for the police. And so he races up to this rooftop and he finds this kind of remote control kind of bomb 
timer panel thingy and he's saying to the cops like please don't shoot me don't shoot me you need to get detective halloran only i will speak to him um he needs to help me because there's five new people involved in this game and so we get detective halloran introduced to us uh callum keith rennie um who a lot of us will recognize as leoban uh from battlestar galactic great actor great TV actor. I'm not too sure about as a lead actor uh, because he just comes across evil. He looks evil to me. He looks sleazy. I might have been too experienced from Battlestar, but immediately, and my experience from Saw movies as well, I'm like, you're a cop. I don't trust you. I don't trust you as far as I can fucking know your backstory. Oh, you've got no backstory? Well, look at that. Well, the film will create some just to vilify him some more. Well, yeah, I know, and I expected that. But at the same time, like you said, we, we hit the five people in this giant room. Now, I'm a sore fan. I prefer the dingy, rusty, kind of dirty-looking saw traps that we get. You know, like... Like, like they've, like they've been uh, not wet, very well maintained, but you can, you, you're surprised of how well they fucking work. This room, it's a, it's an amazingly clean room with these five people with all their buckets on their head. They've got chains around their necks, and they're being pulled towards the walls in front of them because there's all these saw blades. <laughs> Immediately, once again, my suspicions kick in, my spider sense, because one of the people won't wake up. And that one person is the person who's fed to the trap. Now, everybody else in the trap, as they get towards the door, and it really fucking annoys me. I mean, it would be nice if the Saw movies actually took the time to drop names. <laughs> Like, ever start to tell us who these people are? No, they're, they're not worth that much time or <laughs> I know, effort. I know, I know, but I just... I can't, I can't connect to people I don't know. And, they, and the film tries to feed you information, but I'm a sore fan. I know that none of these people are innocent, otherwise they wouldn't be in sore traps. Well, I don't know. Like, the previous Saw films had the innocent... Like, the very last one had the innocent wife get melted in a bloody cooking pot. I know, so, I know, I know, I know. But she wasn't being she wasn't being put through the trap. She still she, woke up in she, one. She woke up in one, but she had no way of actually getting out. These people are, 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 being, are being kind of forced to go through their trap. Yeah. You know, and there's... Well, the very first thing they're told at the very beginning before the trap even starts is that they all need to confess. Yeah. It's the one thing that Jigsaw keeps yelling at them through the tapes. <laughs> yeah. Confess. 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 So we know that all of these are scumbags and we know that most of them are just like, oh, you know, I needed therapy because um, my child died. And it's just like, they won't actually confess. Yeah. Uh, but I just want to go back to uh, the opening of the film because yeah. even though you get you once you get over the shock of it being in daylight and that there's like a police action scene happening, you're like oh, this is very unlike Saw to begin with. <laughs> yeah. Like it, uh, it could easily you could easily lose yourself out of the movie from this moment where I, I you like you're just well. Then again, it's pretty consistent with how inept the police are in the Saw universe. That yeah. like they've got roadblocks, they've got the thing to stop the car, blow yeah. out the tires. Yeah. yeah, he manages to crash. The car, yeah, and get out, and get, out. And get away, and, and get up to the building before any of the police catch up to him. Yeah. So this is just ridiculous already. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, then he ends up getting shot in the chest, even though the police were aiming for his device, which hospitalizes him, which then stalls their investigation for now, other than that they know the game has begun. Well, that's it. Halloran knows the guy Edgar that he's shot because he's a he's an informant, and the movie sets up everything that Halloran is somehow massively involved with all of this and it's I, I like I didn't enjoy it for the last three movies that we've just gone through with Hoffman and the whole investigation there so who thought that this was a good idea to put it into this movie I don't know because like I said I I, I don't have anything against Callum Keith Rennie as an actor he just doesn't come across as the hero to me so immediately if jigsaw is involved with, in, with him and is trying to get him to do these things then he's a motherfucking bad guy somehow and i've just got to wait an hour and a half until the movie tells me why you want to get punished <laughs> <laughs> too late we got an ex-wife that tortures me every day Maybe you deserve it. Probably. Um, we've also got Matt Passmore 
playing Logan, who is the um, kind of autopsy doctor of the police department. Once again, we don't know what city we're in. We don't know what police department they work for. We don't even know what part of where, where really Logan works. They just keep coming to this morgue area with bodies. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> no, I, no I, I know it doesn't, but it's... It's loose writing because, once again, the filmmakers are just thinking that the audience just want to see blood and guts and, and torture. And so it, it fails in the first trap with the bucket heads because they're like, oh, he says we've just got to bleed, our, uh, bleed ourselves even a little bit. So they, they prick themselves or slice themselves on the blades and it immediately releases all their buckets, except the guy who's unconscious. And he disappears he, off frame as yeah, the camera goes past. He gets dragged up on the wall as the camera goes past and you hear a scream and then that's it. And I'm like... Well, then we have I, the body hanging off of a bridge. So it's like, oh, there's a buckethead man up there. Oh, we best get him to the coroner. <sighs> I think, I think he, he might not pull through, actually. He's looking a little pale. Well, what do you think, Al? I don't know. Looks a little pale. Great joke in the film. When when the nurse said that, I was just like, you know what? Is that the first actual joke in a yeah, Saw movie? Yeah. I was like, it's actually pretty good. I mean, <laughs> she's got a dark sense of humor as we explore her character later on. Oh. We find out that she's got a deep fascination with Jigsaw and including searching for him on the dark web. What a fucking waste of a character Eleanor was. What a fucking waste of my time the writer's time the actress's time the fucking anybody's time because because they, they, they pull this bucket head down there's a jogger run along they she sees the bucket head body and you're like all right okay that's the guy from the trap and so they take him in there and logan starts oh look he's got a jigsaw piece missing from him it must be john kramer but john kramer's been dead for nigh on 10 years he can't be back can he no movie! No! He cannot be back! This is reality! We've been reality for like fucking seven to eight movies! There's no way John Kramer could resurrect himself. And as much as I really, really wanted him to, as much as I wanted the movie to be like, well, somebody got a hold of the Necronomicon and decided to raise John Kramer and he's yeah, now the new... I want zombie jigsaw! I want zombie jigsaw! And they didn't! They fucking... Spoilers, they don't. They don't. Because he's fucking dead, peeps. All right? If, if, if he's fucking But dead. they dig up John Kramer's coffin. Oh, and he's not in there. No. no Where did he no, go? Where did he go in? Ele Eleanor. Eleanor is, is fed to us as this really sweet kind of character who hangs out with Logan. They've been working together for years, but she's got a deep fascination with Jigsaw. And so for the cops, anybody who's got a deep fascination with Jigsaw must immediately be a suspect because we're the police. We're so fucking stupid and inept. We have no idea how clues work or how, you know, Jigsaw has spent most of the fucking 10 years actually, you know, making, you know, red herrings all over the place for us. Like, have the killings stopped? Like, like, we, like, I, yes, the, the killings have probably stopped since the moment that Hoffman disappeared, right? To this moment now. Well, the thing is, this film doesn't mention. They don't. They don't, do so. they? They don't. They don't mention if there have been any extra jigsaw killings or even if there's been people missing that uh, that um, they've never found. You know, they, there's there's no back history or, or, or depth to the city and the world that we live in in this story. It is just literally focused on Halloran, Logan, Eleanor, Hunt and these five people that are in the game. That's it. And it's so hollow. It's so fucking shallow. At least the other five movies in the series, one to five, had some real depth that as you followed the movies, you yeah, you, the, the, the threads were all coming completely unleashed as I, you went I on. I don't think any of the movies had any real depth at all. Same as the, they char must have, same as they, the characters. They must have because they went for six movies, dude. But they, just you know, kept, they, they just they, kept they adding had, stuff on they to, had to a, fill out. They had obnoxious writing and uh, very overly complicated threads which just it it seems more complicated than it is until you break it down you're like actually it's not very complicated at all it just, it, and it, actually this film did something that i actually liked and have complained about from right. the previous film okay. where just like saw one and two the detectives in this film are actively investigating the case that we are watching as it plays out. Yeah. Compared to the previous films where it was just two completely separate storylines that crossed over at the end very briefly. Right. Whereas this film, it's like we're following the investigation, we're following the bodies as they're turning up, and then the questions being raised like... How is Jigsaw still alive? Because obviously these bodies keep turning up. We're seeing them in the trap die. And then in the very next sequence, the body's turning up. 
So it's like, how is like how is this working? And that's the kind of mystery that yeah. the filmmakers are trying to to to, to pull trying. over you, yeah. which is what leads you to think, how is Jigsaw doing this? But, uh, so, we, but you know, if, if we know that like, Jigsaw is definitely dead, and he's not doing this, then you're looking for clues to try and figure out how this game, uh, how this movie is trying to play its game, not only with itself but, but with the audience. But the thing is, they're copying all of the things from the previous movie. Oh, of course they are. Which this is, is exact like stuff which, like Saw which, two and five, which and, unless. Unless I'd gone into this movie not knowing any of the formula, it might have made this movie a bit more special. But because I know all the tricks, this movie is now copying the same tricks. You know, like we said, these bodies, are, we're seeing the bodies happen in the trap. And then we're seeing the bodies immediately turn up so that the police can investigate them. I don't buy that. There's no way that they could get the body from that place to that place in such a, in such a quick succession of time. You know, there's there's something going on, and the f the fact that I I wanted after the last movie and what we saw with the many different people wearing the pig's heads, I wanted the cult of Saw. So I would have liked it if this movie had gone into that there were more people. We just didn't we just didn't notice them. You know how Zep in the first one was kind of in the background, you know, and then it turns out he's the main character. You know, like that. But this movie doesn't do that. It focuses so heavily on the main characters like i said logan it's just it's so feeding you so much logan's got a relationship with hunt they used to serve in fucking fallujah back when he was in the military he's got a fucking relationship with fucking what huge geography error there on the, <laughs> on the writers okay because he says yeah he was in fallujah he killed like three taliban, taliban. before he got captured i'm like fallujah's in iraq what's logan's deal what happened in fallujah uh, he uh you got captured, uh, but not before taking out three Taliban. Um, what I heard, they tortured the shit out of them. Right. It's not in Afghan. Right, okay. <laughs> carry, carry on. Yeah, right. But it's the same thing. He's got a relationship with Halloran because Halloran was involved with the murder of fucking Logan's wife. And that's why we should feel bad for Logan because his wife's been dead for a number of years and he's been raising his door on his own. I'm like, I don't care about this guy. I really don't care, movie. Why are you forcing him so badly down my throat? Like he's the main... Oh, right. That's what you're doing because... We cut back to the guys in the traps and, and I started to pick up their names as they started to say them. So you've got Anna, the girl with the dark hair, um, who's complaining that her husband murdered, uh, her husband fell asleep and rolled over onto their baby and killed their baby. And I'm like, ha! So why is he not here, bitch? Um, no, he got arrested. He got arrested and then he got put into a mental institution. And then, and he, then he hung himself. And then he hung himself. So... He's dead, and I'm still like, then why are you here? I, I watch Predators, okay? The Predators don't hunt innocent people, okay? So you ain't fucking innocent. You've got Carly, you know, who looks like your run-of-the-mill street-walking character that we've kind of seen a number of times in the Saw franchise. Um, you've got uh, a Ryan, who I, re I recognise as Griggs from The Thing, who immediately, I'm, well, I'm just waiting for him to turn. <laughs> because I don't trust him. Um, and then you've got Mitch, uh, this this young lad. and It's uh, Mario Van Peebles' uh, son. Oh, is it? Yeah. Ah, right. Um, and each one of them, you, the, the film starts to you know show to you that each one of them is bad. Like, like so in this, in this room they get into, there's, there's three needles. Um, there's one with acid in it, one with a saline solution in it, and one with an antidote in it. In it. And Jigsaw says, well, one of you was injected uh, while you were asleep with a poison. And so you need to work out which one of these needles is the right one. Uh, because how much is a life? And so we start to see flashbacks from Carly, don't we? Mm -hmm. Where she was robbing this woman. The woman had an asthma attack and she died for $3.53. That's right. And so each one of the needles has random numbers on it, which could also help unlock the door to get into the next room. But those numbers will also have a meaning if you recognize the numbers and of course she recognizes that was how much money she managed to get out of the bag and that's what's written on the needle but she's afraid of needles so she doesn't want anything to do with these needles and confess. so she she's not going to inject herself with any of them no even though she's like but what if it's the what if it's the the acid and i'm like well you already know which one you need yeah, that one so but then it's too late chicks was like well i've had enough of waiting around so he yanks the chain and up they all go to be hung yeah they're all being hung and ryan's got the three needles <laughs> yeah and uh, after wrestling with her 
Uh, he ends up injecting her in the neck with all of them. All three of them. And Jigsaw's like, yep, you pass the test, off you go. Yeah. <laughs> and then, well, she dies. I'm like, what the fuck, movie? Seriously, like, like, I, I didn't want her to live because obviously the film had played off as this bad person that somebody died. But the fact that you're now, you're, you're vilifying Ryan. You know, because he's just becoming more and more aggressive, more and more angry, much like in Saw 4, the, yeah. the journalist, <laughs> you know, who's always angry at everybody else. And I'm like, I fucking hate this, because if anything I learned from Saw 5 is if you try to work with each other, you might actually get out of here alive. Well, Harmed, and, but and alive. And it was at the first trap, telling everyone, hey, you just need to scratch yourself. Yeah, you know, I don't you need to her. Do. I don't fucking like I don't trust her. Well, I'm just saying <laughs> she still tried to help them. Yeah, and did. then, to be fair... Um, Ryan did also save the other two by stabbing her because they would have just all hung and died there otherwise. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, he may have been an ass and he didn't need to stab with all three of them, but, but it, it, he got him out of there. But it feeds even more into the into his character, into the next room, because they get into this next room and there's a big door that says no exit. So, obviously, they've been told to follow the rules all the way through because if you haven't... Learn now from a Saw movie. Get the fuck out. Learn, follow, follow, follow the rules. Well, Listen to None him. of these have been in a trap before, so no, how would they know I to mean, follow the rules? That's, that's the thing as well. <laughs> Immediately, they're all just... I have to keep reminding myself because they keep they keep saying for me, who keeps doing this? Who's doing this? So they don't know who Jigsaw is. Oh, there's a clue there. Mm. Um, and so Ryan runs up to the door uh, with the padlock on that says no exit and he puts his foot through the floor and it gets trapped up in this wire. I don't understand how this room works, really. I, I, I honestly don't. Because if he hadn't put his leg into that trap, they somebody had to put their leg in that trap. Not necessarily. They had to find that switch. They'd never found the switch if they hadn't broken the boards. There's yeah. a switch underneath there to, that opens the two doors. And they needed him. Not, they also, needed somebody to put his not leg in necessarily. there. There was no way of a way out of that room. As the, the way that this room works out is he walks up there, his foot goes through the wood. It's it gets how it trapped, works out, yeah. It gets trapped in the wire, and then we're left there for like five, ten minutes while while it just tightens as we look into other things because we start to follow Eleanor and, and Logan and, uh, and fucking Detective Halloran going yeah. around talking with each other. About... Oh, yeah, it cuts back and forth between the investigation and those in the trap, but the, this is uh, a unique twist i think for me on the on the saw setups is that jigsaw seems to be there he seems to be monitoring so he mm. knows who's just died he knows who is in what trap and he can respond using the billy puppet or the tapes whether the tapes are actually playing anything whether the audio is just being fed into the room jigsaw is able to adapt as they go through his maze yeah to tell them you know for all we know jigsaw's got the levers back there that he can pull and push. We don't, yeah, we don't yeah. see any we of don't this, see any but of this. we know he's controlling everything. So he can, you know, because we know that he's the master of predicting the human behavior, we can imagine he had set up various traps in this room at various exits to prevent people from trying to escape and therefore, you know, adapt again, depending on who is available to go and do what trap. But we're just guessing that because we don't see it. Yeah, we're, we're just, just guessing that. But the I'm film just, feeds us. Yeah, but I'm just saying that the way that things are set up, it's plausible. It's plausible, yeah, 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 yeah totally. But the, the way that the film feeds it to us, like I said, if I was an inexperienced, you know, uh, Saw fan, I'd have been like, oh my God, his leg got trapped. But then when I start to look at the room and the way that the traps work, that's what I mean. This whole this whole barn farm trap idea is just so over the top. It, well, th this it, is it the has bit, been. This is the bit that I, I do agree is uh, is is bad. Now, when they get into the, the grain silo, <laughs> yeah. is there a flat screen TV in there? There is a flat screen TV in there. Uh, yeah, it now is I'm a like, flat now, screen TV because they can see Ryan on the outside, can't they? That's right. Now, uh, I, have to, I have to break the, the spoiler here and just say well, that this is set pre-Saw 1. Yeah, it is. So the technology to have a flat screen it's, TV in there. Yeah, there's no way. There's, yeah. there's no way because at this point in time, like people are still using pagers and you know, it's like retro tech, like big old CRTV TVs, you yeah. know? Yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah. yeah, we were there in 2000. So, so it gets confusing, but anyway, the silo also starts filling up with grain. They're like they're up to their necks in it. And then, then the grain stops. You're like, oh, okay, they're not going to suffocate. No, uh, Jigsaw's going to start dropping gardening and farm sharp, tools on them. Sharp yeah, blades sharp and pitchforks. And now he gets stabbed in the back with a knife and she gets those nails in up her arm. arm. And I'm like, how far are they falling? 
they're not falling that far, like, in order to impale in the, her arm. That, they would have had to have been fired yeah. at her. Yeah. So I was like, this is ridiculous. I, this yeah. is so stupid. I couldn't get out of the fact that was Jigsaw just stood up there just throwing stuff down because he'd run out of grain? Or has he actually got a machine set up that's starting to throw... Because the more I think about it, the more absurd it seems that Jigsaw would add all these extra things. And on top of that, it's left to Ryan... Right, who's still got his leg trapped in this wire, and the wire has been slightly tightening over and over. He listens to the tape. It tells him to confess. He says he should confess because it turns out that what he, um, he well, we don't find out until Jigsaw actually asks, tells him about it. But we find out that Ryan was involved in a a, a a drunken car accident when he was like 16 years old, and he's been lying about it throughout his life. He blamed it on the driver, so the driver died. Yeah, Mitch. Uh, sold a faulty motorbike to some uh, to Jigsaw's nephew. His fucking nephew. Jigsaw has more family. Well, I mean, not it's anymore. not not me yeah, but not anymore. Um, and so Ryan pulls the switch because he has a change of heart, and so he doesn't want to die. I don't know. Slices his leg through, which opens up the door to the grain room, which allows them to come all flying out, not get harmed by any of the sharp implements that have been poured on top of them. And opens up the door to the very next room. So I'm like, that's just, that was just completely stupid. Because like I said, if nobody had stepped on that trap, if if they, these three people had been fucking imbeciles, Jigsaw would have had to have opened up the silo trap to at least get Mitch in there. And then what? Tell them that there's a, a switch? Mm -hmm. What the fuck? When they get into the next room, it's already been set up with the flashbacks that we've had with Eleanor and Logan while we've been waiting for Ryan to slice off his leg. You mean the flash forwards? The flash forwards, <laughs> yeah, flashback. Oh, yeah. Is that Eleanor is such a massive fan of Jigsaw and what he was doing and whatnot that somehow, I, I don't know how it works in this world, she's actually been able to buy off of eBay or the dark web the traps that Jigsaw has used. Mm -hmm. So we see them all. Strand's got the, box. Yeah, you got the one that killed Kerry, the angel yeah, one. Yeah, the angel one. We see the 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 the, the, uh, the bear trap one. You know, you, if you're if you're uh, experienced with Saw movies, you'll go, oh, I remember that one. I remember mm -hmm. that one. I remember that one. And she's like, oh, Logan, look, this is my collection. I've just got a bit of a hobby. And so I'm like, I don't buy it. I don't buy her being the new killer. There's no way, no way, because a lot of the time, the killers in the movie have been so secretive and so hidden in the background. She's basically walking forward going, look, I'm the biggest Saw fan ever. Yeah. Oh, and she also lied earlier in the film uh, about where she was because she didn't want the police to know about her fetish for John Kramer. Yeah. Uh, and so she tries to keep this hidden. She tries to keep it hidden from Logan. But then Logan's like, look, I'm a suspect. You're a suspect. If you've got something to show me, show me. And so she does. And he's just like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, you have all this stuff. And she's like, isn't it great? Look at this one. This one, they never found a body for it. And Logan's like, well, I'm the coroner. I've seen it. All the corpses from Jigsaw, this, nobody, no body has ever come out of this device that yeah. I've seen. They say he used this long before he used any of his other traps. And guess what happens when we switch back to the people in the traps? Oh, Mitch, guess what? You just stood in a trap and in you go into the giant human blender. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, that motorcycle that we saw get smashed by that lorry, somehow Jigsaw managed to get a hold of it, yeah. figure out that the brakes were faulty on it yeah. somehow and then fixed it and set him up in this trap so he has to go into this grinder, pull the brake and that will stop the engine so we can get out. And then I'm just like, you know what, Jigsaw, how in the hell <laughs> did you know that the brakes were faulty on that thing? How did you know that Mitch put his foot over the puddle of, yeah. of, of liquid? Yeah, yeah. Were you there? Were you in the next room having a cup of tea? Like, what if Mitch had moved away? Are you telling me that after he accidentally killed Jigsaw's fucking nephew, cousin, whatever, and he decided that maybe he'd move away to another city, that Jigsaw went out of his way, got him from the other city, and brought him all the way back? Because we know they're not in Cleveland. Yes, yes. Because he goes, at least we're not in Cleveland. And I was like, well, that narrows it down. It's the same for the girl who got stabbed in the neck with the needles. Like... The, the police investigated these crimes, right, and didn't find anything, yet Jigsaw somehow manages to find the identity of this woman. They were the only two there. 
Like, how did he know? Isn't it? Is it? Isn't it also slightly released that each one of these people has been investigated by Halloran? Exactly. I mean, that is the link. Yeah. But, like, uh, I mean, I'm guessing she's committed other crimes, but how did Jigsaw narrow it down to that one? Or is, <laughs> like, does he not know and he's just know. hoping to get a confession out of them so we go, oh, thank God, she wasn't innocent. Oh, I did catch a real because one. It, because it gets worse. It, it gets worse. It, it, get, it gets worse before it gets any better. Because after Mitch has taken his twirly slur down the fucking uh. hole and been sliced to pieces, because Anna tries to save him, doesn't she? She, she goes wedges up, the machine, she yeah. Wedges a wheel at a bar into the wheel, and he's like, "Hey, Anna, you saved me!" And then it snaps the bar, and he just gets immediately sliced up to pieces, and he's dead. And I was like, "Well, that was a waste of a fucking character." <laughs> and um, they get the body brought to them, but uh, the. Halloran and Hunt, but while they're investigating Eleanor's apartment, the body falls down in front of them in a wardrobe. And so you're like, oh, Eleanor set up the dead body in her own wardrobe so that the police would find it and immediately know that she might be the jigsaw killer. If you thought that, get out, because I didn't. Because who the fuck drags a fucking sliced up body of mess? Jigsaw does. Hangs it upside down inside a closet with a with a fucking piece of wire so that when they open the closet it will fly down. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> um and so Eleanor races to Logan, you know, and she tells him, look, I didn't kill him. And Logan's like, I know, and I didn't kill him. And the two of them are just like, Well, we need to investigate the killing. And she she'd figured out from the bucket, from the first body, that there was a special kind of chemical virus thingy in there from from a pig farm mm -hmm. and so she's managed to narrow it down to one of the only pig farms in the surrounding countryside of this city somewhere um which just so happens to be related to jill tuck's family name drop that for me was the biggest are you stupid movie <laughs> <laughs> moment in the film are you that stupid? Yes, like, they have been you, there. Like, the only other character that they name drop in this film is Jill Tuck. Yeah. You know, Jigsaw's wife. Now, apparently, on her side of the family, they had farms. Yeah. Now, who was heavily investigated in the previous Saw movies cons constantly? Jill. It was Jill. Now, do you think the police would have gone and investigated any of her farms? Possibly. Be for potential Jigsaw traps? Possibly. Well, evidently, they did not. And I'm like, well... well Remember Either the writers in... are stupid or the police are stupid. And the police are only stupid because the, the writers way. are stupid. But also remember Hoffman was in charge back then. So every time something came towards Jill, he probably just went... Well, at the same time, like I, we, I know too. when we get near the end of this film, <laughs> they find two bodies in that farm that have been there this whole time, which would tell you the police never came to investigate Jill's pig farm. farm. Yeah. Yeah, because after Mitch has died... It is literally Ryan and uh, Anna left. And Anna tries to make it out of the door. And she's immediately uh, taken out and knocked unconscious by a pig wearing person. And she's then slapped in her own little kind of uh, chained up basement with Ryan. And there is Tobin Bell Jigsaw. Great reveal. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, he's alive. He, he is alive. He's, he's looking a lot younger than what he used to. He's like, well, a, lot say, older. a lot older. I mean, I don't know how the, the, the film really He's not wearing his well. backwards cap anymore, so I was so confused. <laughs> yeah, man. I was so confused. Yeah. And, yeah, like, like, like Gary has said, it turns out that the, um, the trap or the game that we've been seeing has happened 10 years prior. So this game has happened before Dr. Gordon's game. Yeah. You know, probably a couple of weeks, maybe a month or whatever, after Cecil has died. Yes. Whatever. So we're watching Halloran chase after Logan and and um, Eleanor as he gets to the, the farm. And they're seeing all the traps happen. It's kind of like two, three, yeah. where they're coming behind the house. You know, and so that... I'll it's just like two, where yeah. you find out right. the police are watching a pre-recorded video. Pre-recorded so, tape, yeah. yeah. Um, and... Eleanor escapes, or, or, or fucking um, Halloran tries to capture Logan and hold her at gunpoint, and then she escapes and runs off, and the two of them fight and get knocked out. And then they wake up in their own traps. And so you kind of got these two things happening all at once, where Jigsaw, Tobin Bell, is talking to Anna and Ryan. 
And he, he explains to Ryan, hey, I know about you. You were 16 years old and you were involved in a drunken fucking car crash and you've been blaming the driver ever since. And so now it's time for you to pay your, for your crime. I'm like, fucking hell, that's a bit much. Oh, and by the way, Anna, do you remember that I used to live next to you when I was going through my chemotherapy? And you had a wonderful husband and a wonderful baby. And then one night the baby died and you blamed it on your husband that he rolled over and crushed her. But it wasn't the husband, was it, Anna? And I'm like, here we go. It was you, Anna. You killed your baby and then you blamed it on your husband and your husband got arrested, taken to a mental ward. And because he was so mental from the trauma of killing his child that he didn't do, he hung himself. So, yes, you're guilty too. And I was like, thanks. Thanks, Jigsaw. Thanks for revealing that because I was waiting to understand just, what the fuck she was doing here. We just want to know how much to hate her. Yeah. And you know what? Like, all the other characters nigh on confess and go, you know what? I was wrong. I did bad. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I want to live. She's the only character who still doesn't even confess. She denies it right to the she end. She does. And when Jigsaw goes, here's a gun. The key to your survival is in there. See ya. And she's like, well, I'm going to grab that gun and I'm going to kill yeah. you because you can't move because you've got no leg. And bang in my face. And it's Ryan. Well, Ryan says that, doesn't he? He says, we've got it backwards. Yeah. And so, <laughs> like, good riddance. And it blows up both the keys. <laughs> he said we've got it backwards. <laughs> yeah, because he's there like, oh my God, I'm never going to get out of here now. And well, he doesn't because we, we see his corpse <laughs> laying next to hers. Well, that's it. And, oh, and, and we get revealed because, it, it, like I said, we cut back to Halloran versus Logan. They're in the little rooms. They've got their, their uh, surgical lasers. Um, and they're, they're being forced to play a game against each other to confess. A conf another confession game. A confession yeah. game. Um, and so they're asked to hit the, hit the button and confess, but Halloran cheats and hits Logan's first. So Logan's goes back and he confesses that he was the bucket guy from the beginning of the movie and he'd accidentally slipped the, switched the stickers. And so that's why uh, Jigsaw had cancer for so long because it wasn't diagnosed early enough. And so he had been in the trap, uh, he'd had his back sword and, and, He'd survived. That was actually pretty cool that, because uh, when we saw him earlier with the scars on his back, mm. we're just like, oh, that's clearly from when he was interrogated tortured, yeah. and tortured. But as we find out, that was the blades that he had got rubbed up against 10 years ago. I was like, yeah. oh, that's kind of cool. That's a little nice little thing there. And so the laser collar kind of hits his neck and blood spurts everywhere and he falls on the floor. And now it's Halloran's turn and Halloran starts to confess as well about how a lot of the criminals he'd let go. He's killed people. He's manipulated people. I mean, if you hadn't thought he was a bad guy up to this point, then well, he just lays it all he back. He just lays it all down for you. And so you're like, I don't care. But he I, did confess. He, he confessed. He did confess. And then we find out, oh no, Logan's still alive. He gets up. It's oh, just like the first shit. movie. And he's like, I've got you all on tape, your yeah. entire confession. Yeah. And so, yeah, you've completed the game. But you know what? I'm just going to join the ranks of Amanda and Hoffman and press the FU button. Because it turns out... So Logan had set this whole thing up to make Halloran the new jigsaw so that the police would investigate him. Yeah. But it also turns out that Halloran had let Edgar go. And Edgar was the guy who killed Logan's wife years yes. before. Yes. And so Logan, even though Halloran has confessed and has won his game, because he had hit Logan's button first... That gives Logan the justification that Halloran cheated and so Halloran should die. And so the movie, using the budget or the special effects that they've acquired up to this point, decide that a laser CGI killing is the way to end the movie. It's pretty badass, I think. It's the first time Saw's used lasers, which is pretty modern. And considering, well, the films, you know, we are now set in the, the modern. The lasers were cool. The lasers were pretty head cool. flop bit was like it flowers out into eight pieces it was like, like that's great <laughs> it was like watching a resident evil death <laughs> you know i was expecting like some kind of tentacle to pop out of the top because it just looks so rubbery and cheap uh, I, I quite liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. I wanted, it's about time we got some freaking laser beams in my Saw movie. <laughs>
And Eleanor, it turns out that Eleanor escaped, and so she's going to go off and As help the you. alibi for Logan to for be able Logan. to get away with it. Yeah. And so, yeah, the murderers, the killers, they get away with it. And I'm like, you know what? Like, wh- why? Why? Why, like, I know he wants revenge for his murdered wife that we don't see against mm. Halloran, the crooked cop. Yeah. So basically, it's just a revenge story yeah. for him to get revenge on him. Why does he need to go through the rigmarole of setting up saw traps and making it look like he's the new saw killer? Like, none of that really matters to or makes get any to difference. The farm, I but he could have set up, any, like, if, if his he intention was to capture him, he could have done any. Like, because... why did he have to kill three other people no, that's it. to make because... it look like it? Like, because we're told why? in the beginning by Edgar that there's five people in a game which feed into the game but he takes these three people that we have no idea what their crimes are they, or what connection they have to any of these games they get put through these games which are much like the games that we've seen and we obviously know that they fail at their because game because those are the bodies we found because those are the bodies yeah. and they all died the same way that they had supposed to have died ten years ago and at this point I'm like you know what because Logan is just a murderer yeah like he probably didn't give them a fair chance in these traps he probably just put them in the torture devices killed them because he needed them to be dead so he didn't give them a chance at all no so I mean, like, I'm assuming this because like the, of the way he treats Halloran at the end. The guy in the bucket head, he's missing half of his fucking head. Yeah. He only did that so that they couldn't fucking identify him. The girl with the acid, how did she inject herself? Because in the flashback, there was like Ryan injected. Yeah. Carly. Yeah. So how did this girl accidentally inject herself with acid? <laughs> and then the last guy, the guy, are you telling me there's, you've got two? Because you've got Eleanor's fake one that she's built, then you've got the one from 10 years ago, and then you've got this one that you threw the guy down so you could get his body? And Logan did all this? And then said, oh, Logan got into Eleanor's apartment and put the body? How the fuck did he hang the bucket head from a bu- I, oh, I give up. I give up. I fucking give up. Well, don't give up just yet, Ian. I want to know what your favourite scenes are. I mean, obviously, it's the traps again because they're just stupid at this <laughs> point. I used to, I used to really enjoy seeing the traps, how they'd work, how you would try to get out of them. But like you said, with these ones, it's like they're purposely. Well, the ones that we see in the flashback have got some kind of escape. Uh, the ones that we're following with Logan, there's no way. I mean, the laser stuff is cool, but I really don't like the flower petal head thing. I, I, I think you could have just left the CGI out of that one. Um, I like the, the over-the-top whirly bird fucking twirly thing that kills Mitch. But it just seems stupid that he didn't just reach down and get the break. You know, because he would have got out. Instead he went, Ah, you saved me! <laughs> um, I don't like Ryan's leg thingy because I don't have any, uh, have any clue of how the fuck that works. Um, how any they would go out of that room if... Like, if, if Mitch had put his leg in, because he even says, oh, I saved you, Mitch. And it's like, well, you should have let Mitch go first then. Because then Mitch would have gone, oh, it's not my trap. <laughs> just, um, yeah, I give up, Gary. <laughs> yeah, I think there's some really good memorable moments in this film. Uh, the uh, he looks a little pale joke I thought was was brilliant. Really enjoyed that. This film is visually very, very striking, maybe more so than any of the previous films, and that is no different when you see Billy the doll. This time, he's had a full makeover. <laughs> he's got lights. He's got lights in his eyes, and that shot where it's like, I mean, you'll notice this film's aspect ratio is entirely different, it has a completely different cinematic look and feel to it, and seeing those eyes light up and Billy come towards the screen, the iconic laugh, really nice modernized touch to, to Billy. <laughs> Uh, I love the whole setup, the whole pun that Jigsaw's like, here's your key to freedom. As we know, he's literally put the key in the, <laughs> the shotgun, shotgun shell. shell. Yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, that was pretty neat. I like that. And, of course, the those in his trap were too stupid to uh, to, to, to listen to what he was saying. So the, they both die. Uh, I know you didn't like it, but I thought the, the uh, lasers lasers in a saw trap, I was like, yeah, that's cool. And uh, it's probably what it would have done if there was those lasers all cutting at once. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, maybe it didn't look as good as it could have, but I like the idea. Yeah. Uh, this time around, I liked the whole confession angle. You know, I, I like that this Saw film, all of the people in the traps, every single one of them are horrible, horrible people. Yeah. There's no, you're horrible, so I'm going to torture your innocent wife angle. You know, because that just doesn't sit right with me in a yeah. Saw movie. This one, totally fine. But but maybe that's why, because like I said, the, the traps that we're following this one are Jigsaw. Where yes. The ones that we'd seen in the one were Hoffman's. Pretty much, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 
And again, something else I also mentioned in the video is that uh, I like the fact that Jigsaw is able to adapt on the fly. The fact that he is alive, the fact that he is there mm. watching and monitoring and being able to pull the strings to make sure the games go and continue, uh, I thought was neat. And so that there weren't pre-recorded messages this time, uh, even though some of them are. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was uh, pretty cool and uh, a nice, nice change. Yeah. Ian, do you recommend Jigsaw? I can't recommend uh jigsaw um because it just it honestly doesn't feel like a jigsaw movie really or 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 a movie that should even be part of the saw franchise personally for me it all stopped at number seven we got where we got to and that's it this one was like like we said it was a soft reboot they were trying to bring it back but also trying to use the old tricks and things that they'd used in the previous movies which don't work for the rest of us because we can spot it from a fucking mile away um the writing i didn't think was very good the background to the characters weren't very good i mean i know i was supposed to hate on them but i i lost the care to hate on them yeah all right ryan was a bad guy and was an obnoxious dickhead but did he did, did he deserve to get his legs sliced off and be left chained up to starve to death over a 10 year period i don't think so but hey ho i'm i'm not jigsaw um funny enough it gets worse after this i don't even know how that's even possible but it does um and so when i look back at jigsaw i'm like it has its fun little moments, but it's just poor. Well, I'm going to be recommending Jigsaw, as I think these new directors brought some fresh life into this pretty stale franchise. And I like that their intent this time around was to steer away from the aggressive, over-the-top, barbaric violence that the series had devolved into and to try to bring it back to the atmosphere of the original film uh, where it was a little bit more about the characters and the mm. world yeah. more than the traps uh, so this eighth entry in the series it's almost as we said a reboot and, and uh, as a standalone film with little or no connection to the previous entries narratively yet still providing exactly what fans have come to expect you know traps twists and some gore and this one i think delivers all of that fairly well and also freshens up the look with new different locations and a tight claustrophobic atmosphere a more cinematic looking aspect ratio with less jarring edits and transitions and gone are the ugly green filters it feels and looks more modern setting it apart from the previous films it has its own style and it works for this story even if it feels like a tired retread of all the previous films the acting here is so much better, and I think Callum Keith Rennie being the only real standout here, while Tobin Bell at least got a few good moments in while being ever-present during the games. So yeah, this was the makeover that the series needed, but probably should have already ended. So it's also very unnecessary, it doesn't add much to the mythology, just more questions, and is unfortunately slightly forgettable it's not great it's not awful it has good production value intense music the classic saw imagery it's more of the same but better than most so it's worth a watch for a casual horror fan to skip all the previous films and uh, it's oh it's an okay addition for returning saw fans his legacy becomes yours thanks for watching off the shelf reviews I speak for the dead.